Good afternoon. Welcome to Sal Magley Stadium. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. Canisius Crusaders hosting the St. Francis Red Raiders. Tom Prince and Tony Caligiuri here on the call. Tom, exciting Monsignor Martin matchup here as we get started. Uh, Canisius on the mound first, St. Francis batting. Yep, Lynch right here on the mound. We saw him throw a little bit in the St. Joe's game as he was the one of the last pitchers to come in and throw. Count goes 0-2 right there. But uh, big implications in this game. Right now you've got first, second, and third that are still yet to be determined in the Monsignor Martin. Lynch with the pitch. Outside and a ball. So what will happen is if St. Francis loses... That would mean that the division title will come down to Canisius and St. Joe's. Pitch over the plate, hit to the shortstop. Bobble, throw to first. Doesn't look like he got him in time. Safe at first. Yeah, tough hop right there, and uh, and but big leadoff batter. That's what St. Francis is looking to do right there, to get that leadoff batter on base and try to make something happen early. Is that Hunter Nowak with the hit? It was. So Nowak on first. No out. Lynch on the mound. It's Ross, Qu Ross Kwiatkowski who's up right now. Pitch outside. That'll be a ball for Raskowski. Raskowski is right now hitting 531 on the season. He's got 11 hits, nine of them for extra base. No, 10 of them for extra base hits, nine doubles, one triple. Wow. Second pitch outside, 0 2 count on Raskowski. Nowak on first, has the lead off. Pitcher steps back from the rubber. The wind up, the pitch, outside, all three. We saw Canisius live on the outside corner against St. Joe's. I expect the same thing today. A lot of coaches like to live on that outside corner and make the batter try to beat them by staying with the ball and going to the opposite field. Pickoff attempt at first. No act safe. No outs. 0-3 count. The pitch, right down the middle, popped up. Shallow. Second baseman could not come up with it. And that'll be a foul ball. Looked like it was kind of drifting. You know, started off fair and then kind of tailor, uh, tapered off. Well, look at the flag right now. See, literally it's up in the air and it's going from third to first. So that would make a lot of sense why the ball just tailed off to the right on that one. And it was a very tough play for the second baseman to try to make. 0-3, should you have taken a swing at that? The pitch, outside. One and three. Three balls, one strike. Pickoff attempt at first, safe. Canisius not shy about going to first base, try to get the lead off. Getting a lot of lead off players with speed, so you're trying to keep them close so they can't get that jump on you. Pitch outside's gonna walk him. So Wostolski goes to first. Nowak moves over to second. Peyton Consigli at the plate. 
Peyton will be our starting pitcher tonight, too. Definitely another one of our top players in the area. As he is a Division I baseball player that will be headed to Canisius. So uh, another big player that, again, we're talking about here in Western New York. And there'll be a player we're going to talk about Canisius going Division I, too. Pitch is a strike. But you can see the theme, Tony, right? Everything on the outside. They're sitting on that outside corner trying to get that call from the outside. Make a batter roll over, especially now. You're trying to get that double play right here. You want that batter to roll over on the ball. Oh, on the third batter, I think we've maybe seen two uh, pitches that have gone directly over the plate. Everything, as you said, has been to the outside corner, just like that last pitch. Consigli getting a good look at that. Watch it go inside. And that's the thing. Lynch is hitting both corners with both uh, sides of the plate. Pitch right down the middle. Popped up to center. Caught. Relay into third. Nowak will hold up on third. We've got Ross Wachtowski at second. One out. First out's always one of the toughest ones as they get that first out. But Consigli does the job. He still moves his runners over, puts them in scoring position. Now you've got second and third, less than two outs, and an opportunity to put points up on the board. National League Baseball, right, Tom? Yeah. Move them along. Pitch outside. I think he called Aiden that a strike, Albano. actually. Oh, he did? Yeah, I think he did. You saw the late where he went like this. Uh, I don't know if he was trying to be nonchalant and go outside, but. Uh... Albano from St. Francis at the plate. That looked outside, one and one. So Albano's going to be playing baseball at the next level also. As he's going to be playing for Ithaca uh, next year. Very scrappy player. Can do anything on the field for you. You can really put him in multiple different positions. And I'm going to tell you, he's a very does a great job of putting the ball in the play and making something happen with his bat. Pitch out, strike. Two balls, one strike. I mean, once, <laughs> yeah, two balls, one strike. Well, you can see as he's really giving you that outside corner, you start to wonder if you're going to see Hodel behind the plate. Try to see if you can extend that outside pitch. If he's going to give it to you more and more, see if you can get out a little bit farther. You mentioned Hodel, absolute stud uh, for Canisius. Uh, heroics against St. Joe's the other night as we see a single. To right, throw in, we're going to score a run. Score two. So St. Francis gets two on the board. What did we just St talk about with Albano, right? Yep. Scrappy does it. And it, what, listen, perfect hitting right there. What did we say? Hit the outside, hit the outside corner. Keep doing it until someone beats you. How do you beat them? You go with the pitch opposite field. Albano does it. Textbook. That's exactly what a hitter needs to do. And he does it with runners in scoring position. That's the perfect uh, textbook. <laughs> it's perfectly dis perfect description. Strike to Nate Langdon. Now in the batter's box for St. Francis. Albano on second with the leadoff. Lynch with the pitch. Swung at to the shortstop. To third. They got a pickle in the middle. Second. They're going to run him down. And they get Albano. Nowhere for him to go on that. What he was originally trying to do was because he, he slowed up, that's why they were able to make the play at third base. But he did it intentionally because what he was trying to do was to block the view of the shortstop so he couldn't make a clean play. You already seen one bobble. You already seen things happen on the field, right, to take that bounce. So if I can absolutely shield him and he gets that quick bounce, it could be that the ball skips away or does something, and he could not only be on third, but you're talking about maybe even he scores. Right. 
Pitch outside to Dawson Lillis. I want to throw a special shout out to one of the St. Francis players who's not here today, Anthony Snyder. I hear he's banged up a little bit. Anthony, I want to let you know we're all thinking of you. I was dying to see you play out there. I know what you're capable of. Boy, it's a catcher, big catcher. This kid can hit, Tony. And unfortunately, not here to play in this game today. Oh, I like catchers that can hit. Really big frame, Tony, he has, and just pounds the ball. Really is. I've seen him since he was nine years old, and I'm telling you, the kids always pounded the ball. What a great what a great kid, great family. Oh, my kind, my kind of player, Tom, my kind of player. So we got 0-2 on the count right now. As that was a called strike right here. So 0-2 on Nate Langdon for St. Francis. Lynch on the mound for Canisius. One on first with the leadoff. St. Francis with a 2 to nothing lead. Hit to third. Fielded. Throw to first. They got him. And St. Francis will go to the bench. Canisius up next. They'll get their first place. We'll be talking about uh, Huddle at uh, catcher for Canisius and game uh, heroics against uh, the game you did the other night at uh, against St. Joe's with St. Joe's with a two-run lead and uh, uh, Huddle erases it and tied it up, forcing extra innings. Yeah, Huddle did a couple different things in that game. So he had to hit early in the game to help them score. Then he has later on a blue pit that falls right past the third baseman into the grass in the outfield. If you would have walked out there, I don't know if I could have per like literally purposely placed it any better than where it did as it went in between different players out there. And then he hits the bomb into the gap. These gaps are big. You hit a gap with, uh, with some speed out there, anything can happen. So anything can happen out there, and uh, it really uh, can do – can do some uh, some damage because you can literally make a team run out there, run, run, and run. So remember what we talked about with that runner on first while they were keeping them close over in the first inning? There's a reason for that, Tony, because what they were trying to do is to make sure if there's a gapper, it's not going to be a run scored because you can hit one in the gap and it can easily score a run here today. Especially if you see the runners have speed like you were alluding to earlier. In uh being, here's a question I had thinking about this uh, earlier today. Uh, pitch count, and we're talking about, you know, in high school baseball, they pay very close attention to pitch count. But now that we have a short season, COVID, this, this, and that, uh, does that all stay the same as far as the amount of pitches a pitcher will get in in the game and how much they could have during the week, how much rest they need to have? Yeah, and no, no, nothing changes from that standpoint, right? Because the whole reason for that was to protect arms. So, and even more, we've got to make sure that they're protecting arms out there with the shortened season because you don't want somebody to go ahead and extend their arms and then you're this early in the season get hurt. Because you got to remember, too, even though with these, a lot of these kids have been playing and doing things indoors and doing all the right things, remember at the same time as we have tons of multiple sport athletes out here. So really, once once the high school season started, some of these players weren't really picking up a baseball or doing some things and had to shut it down a little bit because there was so much asked of them on their other team that they were trying to play for a different sport. Wow. Gr Didn't great example is the kid we got on the mountain right here, right? Peyton, Peyton Consigli does phenomenal for St. Francis basketball. Was a three machine out there for uh, for St. Francis, right? And how much time did really you really get to go and, and, and hit and pitch? Yes, when you got a Division One player, yeah, I, I know he did. But the point is, I'm sure he didn't get the time he would really like to. Is there a big enough difference for what they're doing as far as training? Let's say you're going to, like Neil Turvey has his uh, place there, where you're pitching off of a wooden mound. Comparing that to actually being outside doing it. Uh, is it pretty much the same, or is it all just long as his mechanics and his motion is there? A lot of that, right? You want to make sure it's consistency. You want muscle memory. You want all those things to happen in your favor. Pitch outside. No, they're giving it a strike. Yeah, he's giving him that corner. He, he, and he's giving him that corner. So watch our catcher. Does he keep – I said it with Hodel earlier. How far are you going to try to move that outside corner to paint that corner? See, look at the outside yes. move. See it? He's moved to the outside, the right side of the plate. Pitch to the outside. That'll be a ball. 
One and one. Consiglio actually has gotten a chance to pitch in some great outings. He's been down at Florida pitching. He's done some big things for himself on the mound, and no doubt he's going to be a huge addition to Canisius. Victor Mazzaro, the batter, with a line shot up the middle. Mazzaro rounding first. He'll hold up. Victor Mazzaro with the hit. So Canisius with a man on first. Listen, you're starting to get that feel. It has that St. Joe's uh, Canisius run to it right here, right? Do uh, Both teams answering and both teams doing something right now with their bats early in this game. Consigli with the pitch. Looked good enough for a strike, and it was. Laduca right now, the senior, hitting 381 on the season right now. Isn't he another multiple sport player? Now listen, uh, when you talk about these schools, there are constant multiple sport players out here. Foul ball. WNY Athletics presenting Monsignor Martin Baseball. We are at Sal Magley Stadium. Tom Prince and myself, Tony Caligiuri. Clouds starting to come in a little bit. The uh, seems like the sun is taking a break. I know there was talk of uh, rain, maybe a 36% chance, but that's not until later on around 3-ish. It'd be terrible if I couldn't cut the lawn. Pitch over the head of Laduca. This came into play in the in the St. Joe's game, and it's the same wind we have now. See that off speed or that change up right there? Yeah. You're going to try to get that break against the wind. See the flag right there? Look at the break. You're going to have to go against the wind to, to be able to get in some cases. Right? And we've seen it shift. Oh, great piece of hitting right there. Absolutely. That'll send Mazzara to third base, Laduca to first. One... First and third for Canisius and Vincent Morrow at the plate now for the Crusaders. And Morrow, again, here's the kid I alluded to, your next Division I baseball player, and he'll be off to Niagara to be able to play baseball. This is only his second game back um, from, from uh, playing. He, didn't, he started the season a little bit later. Um, it, it just unbelievable what this kid can do with a bat. He is really good. And I apologize. This is his third game, not his second game. Third, okay. So, so in in his two games already, he's hitting six twenty five, right? Five hits, five RBIs, three runs, a double, a triple, and a home run. Man, that's productive. And this will probably be his home field in college. I believe uh, Niagara plays here. No, Niagara has oh. their own state. Oh, they they have a own? beautiful okay. turf they field. Used to, they used yeah. to play here. Yeah, just a couple years ago, they redid their entire turf field. It is gorgeous. Tell you, stand out. Um, we have um, Brunning right now, who used to be at Roy Hart, right? The lefty pitcher. Killing it up there. Doing such a fantastic job at Niagara. Really has had a great season. We got some decent local baseball here, Tom, with our uh, colleges, Canisius and Niagara. Listen, I've talked about it time and time again, right? Baseball, and I'm going to include softball in this. When you talk about the sports that have sent most players to the Division One baseball, it's baseball and softball. And you want to know why I've been focusing on that? Because that's the reason. We've got so many athletes that are going to be playing at the next level for these sports. And I'm not saying we don't for the other sports. Right. It's just that much more and how well that we do in baseball here in the area. Is it because of the, the travel teams, the feeder programs, things like that, where they really do spend a lot more time with their sport than Absolutely. maybe uh, as opposed to football? It's an all-year round. It's an all-year round sport. Pitch outside. Tomorrow. And timeout, St. Francis is going to, uh, coach is going to talk to the pitcher. So, <coughs> and, and I'll tell you, Consigli, already this season is a part of a combined no-hitter 
versus Tymon. So he's already had a big outing. It was a five-inning game uh, because of the uh, the victory. I think it was 10 nothing was the final, and, and it only goes five when you do that. But uh, had a combined no-hitter. And uh, he is, like I said, has done some special things on the mound over the past couple of years. And uh, no doubt, this is his big game right now, his first real big one when you talk about inside the Monsignor Martin Conference. Because for St. Francis to win this division, they have to win out. They've got to beat Canisius here, and then they've got to go beat Joe's twice. Wow. So it, it, it is still absolutely a possibility, so you've got to get yourself in there, and you need right now your ace to come up big. Such a tough league. Foul ball. Barrow sends that one to the backstop. You know, when you talk about a league, right, from – it is a very, though, top-heavy league, right? They have phenomenal teams that are state-ranked teams on the upper part. Not to say that the bottom isn't, but it really is. It just shows how strong the top half of this league really is. I mean, year in and year out, you're talking Kanisha, St. Francis, St. Joe's, and then you throw a time in in there every now and then, and uh, really very competitive. So, uh, St. Mary's of Lancaster, as we see a uh, hit, and... First baseman could not handle it. Albano losing on a kind of errant throw to first. Yeah, tough throw. He's trying to make the snags. He's trying to make that out, trying to make something happen for his team right there. But, um, you know, here we go. Kanisha's answers again, right? 2-1. You still got runners right now here at first and third, a chance with no outs to be able to tie this one up or possibly take the lead. Nice to see people in the stands enjoying the game. Nice afternoon. Baseball in a legendary baseball stadium. Colbert now at the at the plate for Canisius. Left-handed hitter. Facing Consigli. Colbert plays second base. We've seen him come in and pitch. He did a big job on the mound against St. Joe's. Is that another thing where a lot of these kids are multiple position players? Oh, absolutely. In fact, a lot of them at the younger ages, that's exactly what they try to do so they can be able to go out and be that kind of teammate for his for their coaches. I know with our Little League team that we had at uh, Cayuga, uh, three years that I did it, it was constantly moving kids around. You, Trying different positions, especially pitching when you're trying to find somebody they can throw. Pitch inside. One and one. Colbert's hitting 400 on the season with 10 hits. And of those 10 hits, three of them are home runs. Two of them are doubles. Is there anybody on the roster that's not productive? <laughs> I mean, it just seems like we go up and down. on. It's like, yeah, these guys can play. And you left the team out of those teams out there, and that's St. Mary's. St. Mary's. I was just mentioning them yeah. towards the end. Unbelievable of what they're capable of, right? And you're talking about they went out and won it the last time we were out there, right? They were unbelievable. And I'm going to tell you, they got a couple injuries, and watch what they may be able to do for a playoff run, especially if they're healthy for that run. They could cause some big problem for some teams. Foul ball. Coach Dale Podless over there Colbert. making the play with his hand, bare hands out there. Flashing signs of his youth. On the base, uh, coaching the bases right now is head coach Justin Sanicito. And then, as we just said over at first base, Coach Podless. And then in the bench is Coach Laduca. Ball past the catcher. Canisius is going to score. We tied it two. And easily, uh, Colbert gets to second base. So, Canisius with men on second and third. We're tied at two. And coming to the plate is Tommy Lynch. And nobody out still. Right? That's right. Still nobody out. One thing I'm noticing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like uh, the Crusaders, you could add smart hitters to that list of adjectives in describing how they play. It seems like they're all pretty heads up at the plate. Oh, no doubt, especially against a top pitcher like this. 
Shot goes deep. The right field caught. Relayed into the second base, but Kanishas is going to take the lead three to two. So Kanishas getting its first out. Wait, I thought we already had it. Uh, wasn't there a. I apologize. I, yeah, there's two outs. I, I, I didn't change it. It's my fault on that one. I apologize, everyone. We do have two outs. Sorry, we tried to do the it, literally running the show and talk <laughs> and do everything. Sometimes, I don't know how you do I it. Sometimes I do miss one here and there. So, Pitch too high. I love what Coach Bartell has done over at St. Francis, too. Just a, just a class act, great coach. Players love playing for him. Uh, just an unbelievable guy. He really is. And knows the game of baseball and really knows how to teach it. He's got a good personality, and, and you can tell he's a likable person. And talking with him uh, before the game, joking around, and you can see why the kids like him. Yep. And, you know, in any sport, that's important. You got a coach that is that the players don't respond to. Well, what good is it? Yep, totally agree. Colbert, left-handed hitter. Man on second, the leadoff. He called that one a strike. One and one. Bottom of the first. The pitch. Good enough for a strike. Two strikes on Colbert. You can almost hear the wind picking up a little bit more. Actually, this is Hodel who's up right now. Oh, is it? Yep. 12, I got, uh, yes, you're right, Hodel. My bad. Shout yeah. out to Rich Kozak who uh, said I, he'll be watching today just to see Hodel. I was right, by the way. It was there was on that was the first out right there. Was it? I yeah. thought there was two catches no, in the outfield. Only one. So we've had, that's our first second out right here. And now we're going to have coming up to the plate is the Gavin D'Amico, um, the first baseman. Gavin, you know, again, there's not enough adjectives I can describe. This is a great kid, really is. I've seen this kid be a gamer for years. I was telling him the last broadcast, I actually got to coach him in a game all the way up to the state championships at the 10U level. Granted, it was young, but a great kid. He's really stayed a great kid. That's neat. The wind is really picking up now. You can see... Uh See Dustin, are they moving from the left to the right? Which makes it hard sometimes to throw off-speed pitches as it tries to get through that, you know, what's happening on as far as the weather goes and the wind goes. So what would you recommend throwing on a day like You this? still have to, right? Because you got to change eye levels. You still have to change speed. You still have to do all that. Pitch outside to D'Amico. Two outs, man still on second. Canisius with a 3-2 to two lead, bottom of the first. D'Amico at the plate. Consigli pitching. Strike. Really painting that outside corner, Tom. But you can see as I've been I'm gonna wait to as this game goes on. I want to see how far those catchers are gonna try to go out to get that call because they're giving the off the plate. These strikes are off the plate, and he's giving it to him. So when do you start testing it more and more? See, he's barely going to the outside. See that? Yep. But I'm waiting. I'm going to tell you, I'll bet you in the next couple innings, we're going to see a catcher or two go to the outside or the, or the left-hander's batter's box, that line. Mm -hmm. You're going to see them sitting almost all the way out there. Especially if he's going to give it to you, and then you're almost putting a pitch that is almost unhittable. Consigli with the wind up, the pitch, swung at, missed. They got him. That ends the inning. So Canisius, after one, Canisius leading St. Francis three to two. 
take a break. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. At Cairo First Wellness, your health and well-being is our passion. Let us take care of you and your family like one of our own. Cairo First Wellness Center is dedicated to providing patients long-term relief and teaching them how to continue taking care of themselves. With a blend of different techniques, services, and personalized treatment plans, we'll help you find wellness in a way that's right for you. Between chiropractic care, spinal decompression, nutritional counseling, massage therapy, custom orthotics, and more, your relief is in our hands. If twisting, popping, and cracking intimidate you, our Pro Adjuster restores the same range of motion as a physical adjustment would with gentle, repeated tapping. Dr. Moe at Cairo First has been taking care of my back needs for the past four years. His staff treats you like family. I've had the traction, I've had the massage done, and every time, leave here feeling fresh and brand new. Cairo First Wellness Center. Your health and well-being. Our passion. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. At Cairo First Wellness, your health and well-being is our passion. Let us take Magley Stadium, Canisius versus St. Francis. Canisius on the mound. First pitch swung at, hit to the shortstop, throws to first. Didn't get him. Safe at first. Aiden, uh, Aiden Brunner with the hit. Aiden Brunner got some wheels, man. Did you see him get moving. down that base path? He was flying. That was all because of his speed right there to be able to get that well, out. I thought they had him. <laughs> Throw was a little high, but still thought they should have that they would have had him. But well, I think right. he, he realized he had to rush it, which is why. Pickoff attempt at first, safe. Beautiful day in Niagara Falls, Sal Magley Stadium, Kenesha and St. Francis. Pitch looked like it went outside. Yeah, he didn't signal, so. For those of you who don't know now, we have started a new show on Western New York Athletics to make sure that we recognize baseball players more than they've ever been in Western New York. Steal attempt. Pick off. No good. Safe at second. Tag was like right on the bag. I know that shortstop there wanted it, but that was right on the bag. And I think he actually got in there on that one. Good call. So what I was saying is we're actually gonna we we premiered the first episode Thursday night. It'll be every Thursday night starting 7:30 during the high school baseball season. We recognized over a hundred baseball players in Western New York and got a chance to interview sophomore sensation from uh, St. Joe's, Anthony Greco. Outstanding. Bunt attempt by uh, Mikulski, no good. Kind of bumped a, a foul ball, but first bunt attempt that we've seen. And that's a little bit of that National League small ball play that you alluded to already in the first inning. Move them along. Do we have two and two on the count? I think so. Or two and one. I can't quite see the fingers. Kalski at the plate, left-handed batter, and we have a time. St. Francis with a man on second. Top of the second inning. Canisius ahead, 3-2. to two. Here comes that wind shift right now. The wind now is blowing from the outfield almost directly in behind the back of the pitcher. Fastball over the plate. A little low on that one.
pitch again over the middle. Looked like a foul tip. Ooh, full, full count? count? Yep, full count. What do you look for here, Tom? A fastball? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to look fastball right on the outside corner. Right over the plate, but it's too high. Yeah, he must, have, walk he must have thought that was too high. Tulski goes to first, so first and second for Franny's. Coach Santacino is going to call timeout, come out and talk to his pitcher right now. As we're in a 3-2 ball game, it's only the second inning right now, and it's been uh, all offenses for both sides of the, for both teams right now. Colin Murphy will be at, uh, will be our batter. He's going over to talk to the third base coach. That's Coach Bartell over there who's at uh, over at first base. And over at first is Coach Catanzaro over at first base. So what are you telling your pitcher at this point? You know, I, I, I want to see, first of all, if there's any frustration. Like, we even oohed and out at a couple pitches right here. Is he worried about he's not getting the calls, right? Is he worried about anything that I want to make sure I calm him down? I may also talk to him about how we go after this batter right now before they go ahead and try to get to the top of the order right here. It really is important that you be aggressive and get this out, especially with no outs. Right. Murphy, right-handed batter. And I think they're playing as if this is going to be a bunt. So this was the play if it was a bunt. Yep. One attempt and fouled back. Lynch with a nice fastball over the plate. But you can see they were set up. If you've noticed, that that's exactly why Coach Sanacito went out and brought his infield in. It was to get bunt coverage right here. And what they're going to do is they're going to have first and third charge. And then what you're going to see is you're going to see the shortstop dart over to third base. And then you're going to see the second baseman shift over and cover the, uh, the well, bag. Well, he's holding right now, so we'll see what it is. No, he's going to first. Again, bunt attempt, fouled backwards. Murphy so, with two uh, bunt attempts. No balls, two strikes. So what they're doing is they're going to give the runner second base, right? And they're even going to they're, they're going to make sure that they got coverage at first and third base right there to be able to either get the lead runner or at least make sure we get an out and have the first out. Lynch with the pitch. Beautifully thrown over the plate, strikes him out. That sends Murphy to the dugout. Now Hunter Nowak in for Franny's. And back to the top of the order right here is what happens. So now you've got, you know, a runner in scoring position, runners at first and second, top of the order, only one out. This is what Coach Bartell needed. His bottom of the order comes up big. Top of the second inning. Nowak, the batter, Lynch, the pitcher, fouled off to the right. Noak, the junior, right now hitting 412 on the season. He's got five extra base hits with three doubles and two triples. As I said earlier, you see production up and down the lineup. I don't think there's a weak spot in either roster. Well, that's exactly why they're so good and why they're one of the best teams constantly year in, year out in Western New York. Base steal attempt at third. Looks like they, no, they didn't get him. Head first slide into third base. He's safe. Hodel with a great throw right there. I, you know, I, I, from, listen, we're way up in the press box behind, but I thought the ball was there, and, and, and uh, the question is, did that hand just get in? And I can't see the angle from where we're at, but a great throw by Hodel, great play by Morrow, but you got to give, you know, your base runner huge credit right there. Sure. Foul ball for Nowak. Is that 0-2? And, and remember, that base runner was Brunner. We've already talked about how fast he is. He gets a jump and watch out. But now base hit gives St. Francis a lead. Lynch with the widen up.
Looked like it was outside. One ball, two strikes. Four hundred no whack. The batter. Man on second and third. Wind up. Pitch. And it looks like that's going to be caught by the first baseman. Four and out. One out. Kevin D'Amico yep. with the play over there. That's a, that's the second out of the inning. As uh, Remember, we had a strikeout in the last right. one. So we got two outs right now, and Lynch trying to battle his way through it. But think about this. If he gets out of this one when he had runners on first and second, nobody out, and battles through – Coach absolutely does his job coming out there talking to his team, and then he does his job and does extraordinary on the mound. Confidence booster? Yeah, absolutely. Th not that he really needs it. But. Well, uh, and especially because what you're talking about is you really had to get the top of the order to be able to do it. Pitch outside. 0-1 oh to our batter, Gavin Rostwikowski. Wind up, pitch, hit. Looks like it's going towards center and caught. And that will end the inning. It'll be St. Francis' turn. We'll take a break. You're listening and watching WNY Athletics present Monsignor Martin Baseball. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today, and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Tony Kelly, Jerry, and Tom Prince. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. St. Francis and Canisius. Canisius up 3-2. to two. Bottom of the second inning. Beautiful day in Niagara Falls. I'm still saying I'm hoping I hope that the rain's going to hold out today, right? We're going to be all right, Tom. You know, listen, uh, it, it definitely feels like that. It looks like that. You know, I mean, we had a little part where it got an overcast for a second, but the sun's back out. It looks beautiful out there. The breeze is going. But it is funny how that wind keeps shifting, right? Look at the flag right now. See the way it's blowing right now? It's blowing it's in again, <laughs> right? Um, just a, an interesting wind that they're dealing with out there. Sal Magley Stadium, home of the Niagara Power. My buddy Mike Morosiak does the games. It's just a, it's a neat place to come and watch uh, baseball. Talk about a stadium that was built in 1936, opened up in 1939, adapted for baseball in the 1950s. Of course, it was renamed in 1983 after legendary Niagara Falls native uh, Sal Magley, Salvatore Anthony Magley. I like that. Nice. I like that a lot. And, and they played football here for a little while, too. Yeah, uh, this was the home yeah. for uh, Niagara Falls. You had huge games between Niagara Falls and Trot. This was where the uh, – that was the big rivalry up here. That first pitch was a ball, so we got 1-0 and as the count. Jack Stravino in at the plate. Pitch looked a little high there, 0-2.
what kind of mile per hour uh, do are we seeing out of these pitchers? Obviously, they don't have a gun. Consigli uh, usually sits at, at mid to upper 80s is where he'll sit. So you can see him throw anywhere from 85 to 87 is where you usually see him throwing. Wow. Third ball to Stavino. Stravino. Left-handed batter. pitch right down the pipe that'd be good enough for a strike one and three is the count consigli on the mound wind up the pitch and that's going to walk him so kanisha is getting a walk to start off the bottom of the second Tough pitch right there. I mean, that was close. Didn't Mitch by much on that one, I'll tell you that. Drew Podless now at the plate for the Crusaders. Especially here. Watch Drew's speed. If you get gets a chance to be able to use his speed, he is unbelievably fast. Fake bunt attempt. Pickoff attempt at first, and they got him. Great throw by the catcher. Was that Joe Meyer? I mean, I'm sorry, uh... Uh, Nowak. Yep, that's Nowak behind the plate. Yep. What a throw! Great One out. Throw. And remember, uh, great. What he did is a great job of knowing the scenario that was out here, right? Because what he did was he knew the runner was going to be trying to take off on the bunt. That outside corner is good for a strike. So what he did, he knew the runner was going to be taken off, and then he had to come back because of that, was very smart in getting that ball over to first base to be able to get that runner out. Swung at and missed. That's going to sit him down. Strikeout for Nowak. I mean, that was Podless who struck Podless. out. Podless. Sigley with the uh, strikeout, I meant to say. So Podless, you're not going to get to see his speed on this one. So we have one out. No, two outs. Strike out in the pickoff. That's right. Victor Mazzara at the plate. He called that one a strike on that one. I don't think he really complained. They've been pretty consistent with the calls. That one's a little bit high. One on one. Pitch and calls it a strike. I thought it was going to be inside. It one seemed, ball, two strikes. It seems like his his zone is not very up high or down low, it's but he opens wide. his side to side right. on the one. So it's what we're really seeing. It look look how far he went out. Wow. <laughs> told you he was, was almost coming. in the opposite batter's box. I told you this was coming. As you start to see him giving that outside corner, you're gonna see that movement of the catchers to see how far they're gonna get away with. I just noticed that the that uh Nowak looks over to the dugout. Yeah, somebody's calling the pitches. That's why. Foul ball. Yep, one of the coaches in the dugout is calling the pitches. So they're just telling Nowak what to put down as the uh, call to Consigli. One ball, two strikes. To Mazzara. Pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Mazzara, right-handed batter. Pop up. Second baseman running back on it and catches it. That'll end the inning. Canisius with a 3-2 lead to end the second inning. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball.
WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in western New York. Providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. I love being home. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home. Tony Caligiuri and Tom Prince, WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. Canisius up on St. Francis 3-2 to two as we get ready to start top of the third here at Sal Magley Stadium in Niagara Falls. Been a great one so far, right? Sure. Our pitchers are starting to settle in a little bit now as we saw the offenses really break out in the first inning, calm down a little bit in the second. Your pitchers are starting to find the spot, right? Consigli um, does a great job last inning, and it was the benefit of uh, absolutely that gunned out uh, pickoff over at first base, and then you saw the momentum shift for him. And speaking of Consigli, he's up at the plate right now, left-handed batter. And Lynch, if you remember, really battled with runners on first and second, nobody out, got through the inning and did a fantastic job in the second to now bring us to the third. Now, are Ryan and Tommy brothers? Yes. Swing and a miss there for Consigli. And um, Ryan's the older brother. Okay. 0-1 the count. Pitch outside. 1-1. One and one. This is where you always say to your pitcher, you got to help yourself right here, right? Help yourself. And uh, Consigli now trying to do it with the bat to get things started to scrape at least to get this ball game tied. Foul ball. Over the backstop. One ball, two strikes for Consigli. Lynch on the mound for Canisius. Are there many pitchers that are really good hitters? Yes. Oh, and high school baseball? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A ton. And, in fact, on the show that we alluded to that I do now on Thursdays, Consigli was not only mentioned for his pitching, he was mentioned for his hitting, too. 2-2 two, two on the count. And he's going to pop that one up short. Right fielder settles on it, and it's caught. One out. Just to let you know, Consigli's hitting 333 on the season with three home runs. Okay. So has some power, right? And absolutely will hit the ball, you know, uh, for an average at the same time. Albano now at the plate for... The Red Raiders. We saw a great piece of, hitting, uh, piece of hitting by him as he got the two first two RBIs of the game. Great job going to opposite field the first time up. And don't think that Lynch doesn't remember that. Oh, yeah. Lynch, what we're seeing, I don't know if you recognize it, we're seeing a lot more breaking balls this inning than what we had in the first two. So he's absolutely changing it up a little bit more. Shot to right, caught, two down. Also seeing more and more now going straight over the middle rather than uh, painting that corner. Well, when you're throwing the breaking ball, I hate to say it, that happens more often than not uh, by a lot of pitchers that goes over there. But you'll see when he's usually sitting dead red fastball, um, it, it, it's where they're, they're looking to paint those corners. See where Hodel, see how he's shifting out to the outside? See? Yep. And and he's setting up on the outside half of the plate is what he's doing. Langdon fouls it backwards. 
for our first strike. Bear with us, folks. We had a quick camera there uh, blip, but it's fixed. Strike two. Oh, and two on the count. Lynch waiting for the pitch to wind up. Straight over to the plate and gets him. So that ends the inning. It ends the top of the third. Canisius up three to two. So Canisius bats will look to uh, will look to heat things up here at Sal Magley as we get ready for bottom of three. Let's take a break, Tom. You're watching WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. At Cairo First Wellness, your health and well-being is our passion. Let us take care of you and your family like one of our own. Cairo First Wellness Center is dedicated to providing patients long-term relief and teaching them how to continue taking care of themselves. With a blend of different techniques, services, and personalized treatment plans, we'll help you find wellness in a way that's right for you. Between chiropractic care, spinal decompression, nutritional counseling, massage therapy, custom orthotics, and more, your relief is in our hands. If twisting, popping, and cracking intimidate you, our Pro Adjuster restores the same range of motion as a physical adjustment would with gentle, repeated tapping. Dr. Moe at Cairo First has been taking care of my back needs for the past four years. The staff treats you like family. I've had the traction, I've had the massage done, and every time, leave here feeling fresh and brand new. Cairo First Wellness Center. Your health and well-being. Our passion. We're back from break. Tony Caligiuri and Tom Prince. How, how many innings do uh, most starters go? Do many uh, go the f uh, full distance? Or do we see more and more uh, um, specializing with your bullpens in high school uh, baseball? So coming to the bat will be Jacob Laduca. For Canisius, looking to uh, get things going here at the bottom of the third. Casigli still in the game, but it's still early. Had a great last inning, right? Think about it. It was one, two, three. Even though the runner got on, it was a one, two, three sure. inning. Bunt attempt. Caught! Great play by Nowak. What reflexes. Cat-like, even. <laughs> Nowak's been big behind the plate, I'll tell sure. you that. He really has. Everybody's talking about Hodel, what uh, you know, an outstanding catcher he is. Nowak's saying, hey, look, take a look at me, too, guys. Yep, Nodal, Hodel's going to be off to end trip is where he's going to school, too. Pitch inside for a ball. Want to know the count. Kasigli, the pitch. Right field caught. Morrow's nice shot there, but uh, it didn't get down. So Look at Murphy outs. with the uh, catch out there. Two outs, considerably looking for another one, two, three inning here. Boy, both pitchers settling in nice now to this one as we go from, like I said, offensive explosion to start it. Pitchers settled in. Now we got a pitcher stool on our sure. hands. Sure. Yeah, it's starting to look like this is going to be a high scoring game. Yeah, but very good job of both, like I said, settling in right here. And in essence, I know the score is 3 2, but this is a 1 nothing ball game. It is exactly what it is when you think about it, and you're now in that mentality of a pitcher stool. Hit over to first base, easily fielded, and Casigli with the out. So that'll retire the Crusaders and end the third with the score, three to two. We'll take a break. Your WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. 
Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. back top of the fourth inning three to two is our score wind is picking up a little bit more now tom we'll see how uh, what kind of impact that has as we continue to go along here at sal magley waiting for like sammy's pizza to uh arrive i don't think that's going to happen though so you asked about a dh here's our dh right now for Saint for st francis And, and what is unique that you see a lot of high schools used is the DH isn't only used for the pitcher, right? Because sometimes your pitcher may be your best hitter out right. there. So he's actually DHing for the second baseman. Shot to right field over the second baseman's head, and that'll be a single for uh, Dawson Lillis. Lillis. Yep. Lillis, great job. Again, always look. Look at those hitters that can go opposite field and do those things, and he comes up big right there really picking up his team as that head start for them that they needed. I would say that uh, the most, the majority of the hits today so far have been opposite field. Yep, and if you think about why, right? Because they're sitting on the outside corner. That's right. where we're seeing all the pitches go. Lynch, the wind up, the pitch. That's going to be outside, gets past the catcher, and Lillis will be able to advance to second, rounding second, holds up, and that's where he'll stay. So Lillis with a stolen base. Brunner at the plate, the batter. You know, I also wanted to throw a shout out at the end of that last inning over at first base, that last play. That was a great play there by Albano over at first base. Tricky Hop breaking out to the foul territory out there. Does a great job of catching and be able to get the out on that one. Yeah, he flipped it to Consigli as we get a... Shot to second base, thrown out at first, but Lillis advanced to third. One out. And to all your younger athletes, younger pitchers that are out there, watch what Consigli did. Anything hit to the right side, your second or first baseman, absolutely the first baseman, you better be getting over down that first baseline and covering first base, and Consigli does exactly what he needs to do to be able to get that out. Lynch the throw. That's going to be inside for a ball on uh, Mikulski. One ball, no strikes. Lillis on third. Left-handed hitter, Mikulski. And that'll be a strike, one and one. So I see Hodel's dad over in the stands. He's actually the assistant coach at West Seneca West. He's also the JV head coach at West Seneca West. And uh, I know right now uh, West was playing at noon, if I'm correct, today. And, and they moved their games, both East and West have moved their baseball games over to Centennial Field over in West Seneca because of all the construction that's being done because of the new fields that are going in at West Seneca. Oh, I haven't been that way in a while. Love Centennial. So you do a lot of summer games there. Pickoff attempt at third. Lillis is safe. I'll tell you, that so was just still one a, and one. Yeah, that was close. If you look at no, it looked like it was three and one. Three and one. Um. That was close. I'll tell you, if that throw was just a little bit closer to the bag, I'll tell you, that may have got it, but a great throw right. down third baseline by Hodel. 
Strike out. Oh no, three and two, full count. Rather. Yeah, it was three and one, so now we got a full count. One out, though. St. Francis has got to do, do anything they can right now to get this run in. Mikowski, left handed batter. The pitch, foul ball. Still a full count. Ryan Lynch on the mound for Canisius. They're up three to two. We are top of the fourth. And a timeout. Lillis on third. Waiting for the pitch. Too high, and it's going to walk him. First and third now for Franny's. Number 13, Colin Murphy now at the at bat for the Red Raiders. Pickoff attempt at first, safe. Runners leading off. Murphy, right-handed batter. Pitch over the plate. Strike. Nice hook there by Lynch. Looked like a curve. Hard to tell what the ball does up here. You're the man, Tom. You could pick these things off easily. Pitch. Hit up the middle, gets past the second base, rolls into center field, one scores. Play attempt at third, he's safe, and at second, out. So we got a tie now. Nope. Lillis right. scored, Mikowski, I mean, uh, who's that made over to third? And one out, or. Uh, yep, one out. One out, top of the fourth. We got a tie ball game, 3-3 three, three right now. And that's Mikulski who's over at third right yeah, now. Yeah, Mikulski's the one that snuck over. Hunter Nowak now the batter. Nice shot to left. That's going to take a bounce, get past the left fielder, and that's rolling towards the fence, scores one. Nowak, round in second, headed to third, the throw. They got him. Wow, nice relay. To end relay. the inning. Nice relay right there though, uh, by those guys, right? Good job on the relay there, Tony. Absolutely phenomenal job. As uh, you saw, their arms in the field is what gets them out of that inning right there as Canisius comes up big. But uh, we... Uh, we have a new lead right now as St. Francis will take a 4-3 lead going into the bottom of the fourth. Let's take a break. Your WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. At Cairo First Wellness, your health and well-being is our passion. Let us take care of you and your family like one of our own. Cairo First Wellness Center is dedicated to providing patients long-term relief and teaching them how to continue taking care of themselves. With a blend of different techniques, services, and personalized treatment plans, we'll help you find wellness in a way that's right for you. Between chiropractic care, spinal decompression, nutritional counseling, massage therapy, custom orthotics, and more, your relief is in our hands. If twisting, popping, and cracking intimidate you, our Pro Adjuster restores the same range of motion as a physical adjustment would with gentle, repeated tapping. Dr. Moe at Cairo First has been taking care of my back needs for the past four years. His staff treats you like family. I've had the traction, I've had the massage done, and every time, leave here feeling fresh and brand new. Cairo First Wellness Center. Your health and well-being. Our passion.
We're so back, bottom of four. Real quick, Tony, and sorry I, I didn't tell you I was doing this. We just posted right there as uh, the show that I do on Thursday nights for baseball. We put out the logo and everything for it, the Diamond Report. But check it out because uh, I guarantee you – that there are multiple people in this game alone, right, from the Kenesha side and the St. Francis side that were recognized last Thursday night. And there's no doubt, especially because we're here right now, that you're going to see some more recognition to both these teams in the Diamond Report that you'll be hearing Thursday nights at 7.30. We have, we've said right now, everybody said we can't find our box scores, we can't find stuff on high school baseball, we can't do this. Guess what? You have your opportunity right now, right? This is a show that's derived right towards baseball and an opportunity that you can see your son or daughter if it's softball because the second half of the show is softball, but you absolutely will get a chance to see some recognition of the top players here in Western New York and the top performances here in Western New York. Outstanding. Yeah, and as you said, you know, we talked about it earlier, the m amount of uh, kids from Western New York that get scholarships on to uh, <coughs> play baseball in college. And they're all at different levels, at JUCO, um, all the way on up. Western New York, well represented. And again, you have so many great travel programs and in uh, leagues around, I mean, you do the South Towns baseball. It's it actually that ended. I I ended that this pe this last season was my last season for the South Towns, and the reason for it is because I really wanted to now dedicate my time here as a niche that was really needed here in Western New York for recognition of our student sure. athletes. Pitch outside, zero and one is the count to Tommy Lynch. You know, we have, we have a ton of baseball leagues that are here in Western New York, and I felt like now was the time, was the perfect time to let those leagues row, go and be successful. You know, and the travel teams around the area uh, do very well oh. when they're playing in tournaments in other states. Yeah, and that was a called strike right there. So we've got a one and one count right here in the bottom of the fourth with St. Francis leading four to three. Consegli wind up. The pitch looked like a little bit low. Yeah, it was down in the dirt. Two balls, one strike. To Tommy Lynch, the batter, right-handed batter. So does Canisius have another answer in front of them, right? They've done it in the last couple games. Pitch outside, 2-2. Two, two. So what happens here, right? If St. Francis wins, they stay in contention for the Monsignor Martin title. If Canisius were to lose, they're now out to be able to get the Monsignor Martin title as they'll have two losses. Shot to center, caught. And what will mm -hmm. happen is they'll have two losses right now in the conference, right? So that'll mean that St. Francis and Canisius would absolutely be tied for that second spot right there. And then it all depends what happens with St. Joe's. So then if St. Joe's were to win just one, it would mean St. Joe's would win the title, and then St. Francis would drop to three because they'll have three losses on the season as they've already lost to Canisius and has a loss to St. Mary's in conference too. Odell now at the plate, left-handed batter. One ball, one, uh, no strikes. Looked like went outside, so two balls, no strikes. Yeah, a little high and high and outside on that one. One out. Spark plug last game against St. Joe's. Looking to be the spark plug again, Tony. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Hodel on the season right now is hitting 333. And he's got a triple and a home run on the season right there with five RBIs. <laughs> Most of them in the last game. Yeah. Shot to the shortstop. Fielded. Throw to first. It's good. They got him. Two outs. Albano does a nice stretch right there. Goes up and gets that ball. So 
so impressed with both these teams. Like I said, and then you add St. Joe's into the mix, and you're going to even be more wowed. And that's a young team, right? <laughs> yeah, which is even more amazing, right? And then, uh, and then don't discount St. Mary's because St. Mary's has a great team too. Getting better and better, like I said, getting some key injuries and getting their players healthy. Great competition. Hit up the middle, fielded by the shortstop. Throw to first, and they got him. And that'll end the inning. So that completes four innings here at Sal Magley. Franny's on top of Canisius, four to three. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in western New York. Providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. Back at Sal Magley, Tom Prince, Tony Caligari here. Top of five, St. Francis up four to three. As you said, the pitchers have been settling down. It's like they're mowing these batters down one after another. Well, St. Francis, though, did come up big to take the, uh, to take the, take the lead, lead, right, yeah. last inning. So now the question is, <clears throat> do we see them settle down again? You know, do we see Ryan settle back in again, or, uh, you know, does St. Francis try to take advantage? If you look right now, it looks like Canisius's bullpen has started up. So, uh, and it, it's hard to tell, but I think that's Tommy Lynch, Ryan's younger brother out Number there. six. Who's out there warming yes. up out there in the bullpen. Yeah, I wonder if there's any uh, smack talk between the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I know if, if, a, a boy's household uh, myself, <laughs> I'm sure there is. Ryan Lynch with the pitch. The hit up the middle of the shortstop. Throw to first. The, no, oh. safe. Pulled him off the bag. D'Amico had to stretch for that one. Had to stretch just a little too far. As you see, he comes off the bag right there. If he was an inch taller, he might have gotten him. Yeah, and it was off to the side a little bit, which is why that was such a difficult play to make. But, boy, St. Francis gets that lead runner on, right? And, and now the question is, does Lynch be able to settle in, try to get that ground ball double play, but a big hitter and consigli up to the plate? Sure. Pitch outside. 0-1 oh, the count on consigli. Ross Witowski at first with the lead off. Lynch to wind up the pitch. Foul ball. One and one. Yeah, it looks like I said, well, we're in the top of the fifth, right? I mean, uh, you know, let's hope that... Uh, these clouds hold off right here, and we're able to get this one in, but it'll be a great opportunity to get this one in. Not even threatening. I think we're good. Well, look behind us, though. Uh, 
Do I have to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The behind this is uh, is starting to get a little. I'm holding overcast. out hopes at, mm-hmm. at mowing my lawn after this. But remember, you got this thing up here in Niagara Falls where the lake's right here, and we see things break up over here constantly. Pitch outside, one ball, two strikes. And it looks like uh, Lynch Tommy right there has done his warm-ups. He's ready to come in if Coach Sanicito needs to make a change right here. So the good news is you won't have to change the last name when you say who's on the mound, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> That's pretty easy. Pop up. Going short, shallow. Center fielder grabs it. Four and out. One out. Top of the fifth. Franny's holding on to a four to three lead. Aiden Albano now the batter for the Red Raiders. And we're gonna we're gonna look through this week. We should be adding to our schedule as you'll see us do more softball and baseball games this week. As there are some big matchups, you'll probably see us do some more. Section six this coming week as we started out here in the Monsignor Martin division right here and uh, and really felt it was important to start with the Monsignor Martin division just because of the fact is they're ahead of everybody, right? They're two weeks ahead of everybody and we're already talking about who's going to win this title right here based on games right here. How many games do they uh, would normally play compared to this year? Usually it's about 20 games, and they're going to about get those in. Oh, okay. You know yeah, I, I thought mean? it was going to be much shorter. No, yeah, no. It's If you look at right now, let's take a look at their records, and uh, we'll wait till Lynch throws a pitch as he does the pickoff move to be safe. But Canisius right now is 6-4 and four overall and 5-1 and one inside the Monsignor Martin division. And, and I'm going to tell you, of those four losses, three of them are to McQuaid out in Rochester. So, okay, don't look at a 6-4 and four record there. Pop up. And it's going to be a foul ball. And to them, McQuaid, McQuaid needs those wins because they do get points for victories over these guys to get into their sectional play. So McQuaid absolutely needs those wins, while Canisius and Joe's and Franny's, if they play them, doesn't need those wins as bad because they mean nothing that happens within the conference. Got it. And then from the flip side for St. Francis, St. Francis right now is eight and three overall and five and two in the league with a loss already to Canisius. And like I said earlier, a loss to St. Mary's. But this is this is why this game is so big right now. I mean, ultimately, I guess, you know, if I'm if I'm Coach Nasca, right, with St. Joe's, I'm sitting at home right now, and I'm probably going, hmm, I probably want St. Francis to win this game. And the only reason being is if they win, then I have absolutely right now have everything in my destiny because if I just beat St. Francis once, we win the title, we get the number one seed. Got it. Pitch outside to Albano. You know what I mean? And then everything is in your destiny. You right. like when you have that, 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 you know, everything that you control yourself as a team, as a coach, as a player. Got a leadoff runner at first. Comes a steal attempt. The throw. Oh, nice. They got throw. him. That one wasn't even close. And that'll end the inning. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. I love being home. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. 
Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. Tony Calachuri and Tom Prince back here at Sal Magley Stadium. We just had a nice visit from our pal Bryce Hopkins, who coaches and uh, does a lot of sports information for Canisius High School. Great guy. Nice to see him uh, walk up and say hello. Absolutely a great guy, and he bleeds gold and blue, right? No oh, doubt absolutely. about it. You see him at so many different things. You see him from basketball games to, you know, to, to of course, football, right? Baseball now. He's all over the place, and he really does support this Canisius program. Just a great guy, and he really supports athletes in general throughout Western New York. Yeah, it helps us out a lot. Uh, yeah. Constantly getting emails with information and uh, you know, whatever is going on at Canisius, I really appreciate that. Yeah, and it just and, and, and overall, just a really nice guy, yeah. period, is what it is. I've known him for a long time. And again, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Bottom of the fifth. Seeing who's at the plate now for Canisius. I think we got a pinch hitter right here. Is that number 11? Yep, Christian Cabrera. Cabrera. What the hit? The right field. Well, Canisius puts one on first to start at the bottom of the five, fifth. And then they'll bring in Drew Podless. I'll tell you. This I, is the speedster you were talking yeah, about. And I don't think I've seen a at bat that he hasn't squared around at least once in the at bat yet. So don't be surprised you see him try to lay a bunt down here as you see St. Francis in on the grass at third base defending that. But he does a great job. He could put this down the first baseline and try to get a hit here. Bunt attempt, no good, but a steal, the throw. They got him. Boy, Nowak with the gun. Nowak and Hodel have just been great behind the dish today, right? These are two of the better catchers in Western New York, aren't they? Well, uh, listen, we got a lot They're of up good there. catchers. And They're listen, up there. The number one catcher in Western New York is about to go to the Major League Baseball draft in Joe Max. So, I mean, we got a lot of guys right now that are huge behind the plate. You got another sensation, Dalton Harper coming from Merrillville. Like, I could go on and on. I saw it in. Uh, when they played playoff game here at Niagara Falls a couple of years ago, and I saw you, he was, I think, a freshman, and he no. stood out. <laughs> he's, he's only a freshman now is what I think. He was a seventh grader when he played. A uh, seventh? That's yeah. right. Oh, my. He's a stud. Yes. There's no question about it. He's a stud. But Nowak does a great job right now of right helping, helping Consigli stay in his groove Big out there. Now you get Podless. Now you go to the top of the order with two outs. Casigli has really settled down and uh, dominating. Pitch gets away from the catcher on that one. No, I couldn't handle it, so that'll be a uh, ball. One ball, no strike. Yeah, if you think about the three runs he gave up were in the first inning. And since then, he's just really settled down into the game. Mazzaro, who had one of those hits earlier at the plate for Canisius. Pitch is high. No ball. I mean, uh, two balls, no strikes. And you've really seen Canisius battle at the uh, at, with their at-bats. Everything going to the right side. We haven't seen many hits for either team over to left field. I think one. Yeah, and it was a great one. Yeah. It was one that got by uh, Podlis in the outfield right there. But uh, you, can, you can see as they're doing a great job of sitting on that outside corner and making you beat them. And right now, St. Francis has just done that little bit extra up at the bat with four runs. Three balls, one strike on Mazzara. You got two and two, two? is the count. Yep, two right, and two. Three and one, my bad. I just saw I was able to see his fingers on that one. It's tough. We're up in the press box, and we're trying to look down through a netting. So sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult for us to see. Screen and netting. Yeah. And then not only that, 
Yeah, we have a screen and, dirty windows. and window and then through the net to the field. So there's a lot of obstacles to get to really see it clearly like we would normally try to. We've got to tell Neil Turvey little Windex up here. And, uh, and then what happens is our camera is completely down the first base sign. And at a walk, Mazzara. So Consigli walks Mazzara to the bottom of the fifth. And that'll bring Laduca into the batter's box. Two is, outs. This is a big hitter right here, Tony. You want to get Laduca out because you do not want one of Canisius' best hitter to get to this plate with a runner in scoring position. Pitch down the middle, gets by Nowak. Steal to second and rounding it to third. Mazzara on third. Steals two. Pitch got behind Nowak and uh, Mazzara showing some wheels going all the way from first to third. Two outs, bottom of five. Franny's leading four to three. Single here ties this game up. Pitch outside. 0 and 1. It'd actually be 2, two and 0 because of the one right there. So 2 and 0 is the count. My hands are dyslexic today. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to go foul. Had, it, had that straightened out, that would have definitely scored uh, Mazzara. And he had a good jump off the bag, too. Well, listen, that, if it just lands in the grass, he's scoring. I mean, yeah. he's walking home. Pitch a little bit high. Laduca, I mean, he's got the size that if he connects one, uh, you could be in trouble. He's battling right here, too. Could that bat battling it out? Yeah, Consigli doesn't make things easy for you. There goes a shot. That's true. That'll get passed, and that'll score a run, 4-3. to three. I mean, 4-4 four is our score. I got to tell you, Kinesius may be one of the scrappiest teams I've seen play in a long time. Just never say die attitude, constant going after it, right? At every at bat, every single inning, just do a great job of team baseball. And now you've got your leader here to be able to come up and do some damage. And, and I'll tell you, is th this kid can hit. And you want to talk about a kid that could pound the ball, you got it right here. Morrow at the plate. Nowak lost the ball, and Laduka's going to steal second. Good job of Laduka reading that, right? He saw that uh, that Noah couldn't find the ball and takes off to go to second base, and now you've got a runner in scoring position with the, runner, with the batter you want up to the plate. So this is big right here, right? And, and again, Magic Kanish is coming back again from being down two straight games. Just constant battling. Boy, you got to give a lot of credit to these players and a lot of credit to Coach Santacito. He keeps his players in that game constantly. 1-0 the count. See how Nowak's pitching outside, setting up outside, but the pitch goes inside. So I don't know if that was... Uh, it looks like it was an off-speed pitch, so it looks like it hung in the air a little bit. And timeout. So was that a ball on the last one? Yes. All right, two balls, no strikes. You got a runner on second. You're tied. Bottom of the fifth. You have two outs. Well, I'll tell you, the first two games we've picked to cover in the Monsignor Martin Conference have been have been great, right? Think about it. First one was Joe's and uh, and. Canisius, we go to extra innings with a Canisius getting a 9-8 victory. And now here we are in the bottom of the fifth. 
in a 4-4 game again. So the first two games that we've been able to uh, come out and broadcast for the baseball season have just been absolute dandies. And uh, it's just been fun to sit here and call, fun to watch, great day. Hey, Western New York, we are out here for baseball. Seeing uh, Franny's bullpen is active now. So was that timeout a uh, chance to buy time for uh, the bullpen to warm up? Because I haven't seen anything to show yeah. that Kasigli is, is throwing anything different. It, it seems like he hasn't lost anything. He's still pretty much the same. Oh, who's warming up out there is number 22, Aaron Roberts. Hit to second base, throw to first, and they got him, and that'll end the inning. So at the end... End of five. We are tied at four. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. At Kyra First Wellness, your health and well being is our passion. Let us take care of you and your family like one of our own. Cairo First Wellness Center is dedicated to providing patients long term relief and teaching them how to continue taking care of themselves. With a blend of different techniques, services, and personalized treatment plans, we'll help you find wellness in a way that's right for you. Between chiropractic care, spinal decompression, nutritional counseling, massage therapy, custom orthotics, and more, your relief is in our hands. If twisting, popping, and cracking intimidate you, our Pro Adjuster restores the same range of motion as a physical adjustment would with gentle, repeated tapping. Dr. Mo at Cairo First has been taking care of my back needs for the past four years. His staff treats me like family. I've had the traction, I've had the massage done, and every time, leave here feeling fresh and brand new. Cairo First Wellness Center. Your health and well-being. Our passion. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. Rank the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Back here live at Sal Magla Stadium. Tony Calagiri along with Tom Prince to the right of me. Hanging out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon at Sal Magla Stadium. St. Francis and Canisius locked at four. And we've got a pop up to start the sixth inning. And that's going to go out for a foul ball. Almost enough room. Just be able to hold just out of his reach right there. It looked like he had a beat on it, but uh, unfortunately it actually looks like it drops right into the dugout there as the dugouts are kind of those sunken in dugouts right here. Nate Langdon, the batter. Lynch with the pitch. The wind up. Throw. And they get a strike right at that corner again. No balls, two strikes. A little late there on this yeah. call, but they got it. We got it. All good. And uh, Ryan Lynch, we saw his brother warming up, but he's staying in this game and still pitching well. Foul ball. 0 and 2. Ryan Lynch, the pitcher for Canisius. Nate Langdon, the batter. Way outside. One ball, two strikes. Top of the sixth here at Sal Magley. We're tied at four. Did he swing or not? No, nope, he appealed it, um, and the uh, ump says no. One ball, two strikes. The wind up, and just over the head, two and two. 
Langdon being a smart batter out there, he's not uh, going to chase anything. And walked him. So Langdon gets on first to start the inning. I think you're going to see it. You're going to see a pitching yep. change right here. Lynch for Lynch. So Coach Sanacito is going to take his stroll, stroll to the mound right here. Talk to Ryan for a second, as Ryan does a great job of keeping this a 4-4 game. I think what Coach Sanacito was going to say was, we were going to let him go. The first base runner, he can go as you know until he lets a base runner on. Once that base runner came on, I was going to the bullpen, and uh, now you see younger brother Tommy come into the game, and you know he's saying is, you better get this win right here. You better as an older brother, right? <laughs> is, he gonna be throwing, do, is there much difference between the two and the way they throw and what they throw? Yeah, you can see is that actually it, Tommy is much taller. taller. I was going to say that, yeah. So, I mean, different styles of pitching, absolutely. Does that change much for the batter and how he sees the ball coming off the pitcher's hand? Yep, because uh, the longer you can go to the to the catcher, right, the longer you can get that stride, the closer you are to the catcher is actually a perception of anywhere between, uh, I think it's three and five miles an hour is what they say, more difference if you're closer releasing it towards the plate. Because there's one thing I always heard about, you know, Randy Johnson when he was pitching in the majors is that it, because he was so tall, it was difficult because uh, uh, you didn't have as much time to yeah. realize what he was throwing. Yep. And, and not only that, I mean, you're talking about a guy that was throwing 98 mile fastball. Well, that's a, you know, a whole different. <laughs> that's a whole different. That was thing. six eight, and not only that, <laughs> he was wild to boot for a good portion of his career. I'll never forget that All Star game with John Crook comes to the plate. He didn't want to have anything to do with Randy Johnson. That's great. He put his. I mean, he may have had his on opposite <laughs> way. Got in the left handed batter's box, or the, he may have had his toe <laughs> inside the batter's uh, box. That was about funny. it. He didn't want nothing to do with them. Of course, Randy was the one that uh, hit a bird <laughs> off of a pitch. Birds just threw exploded. It, right, as he threw it. <laughs> Normally, you see crazy things happen when they're hit and it hits there because of the flight the ball's going to take out there. That was crazy, <laughs> that one where he was just throwing his fastball <laughs> down. And you want to talk about timing. Exactly. Boy, I tell you, when they went up to Birdie Heaven, how did you how did you get here? You know, most say they ran into a building, or you know, flew into a building, or ran over by a car, or hit a car, I hit by a fastball. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dawson Lillis, the batter now for St. Francis. One on, no outs. Top of the sixth. Tommy Lynch, now the pitcher, throws that one outside. It's one of the few outside pitches we uh, haven't seen go in favor of the pitcher right there. One ball, no strikes. Foul tip that one away, one and one. Looks like Tommy has more... Uh, not a straight overhand delivery, but it kind of like comes uh, three, quarters. three quarters. Looks about the same uh, speed. Nice hook. He's got great yeah, he off does. speed. That stuff. ball was, that ball came right in. I've got a chance to see uh, Lynch since he was young. I used to coach against him. His dad was a coach in our South Towns Travel League. Um, and uh, he absolutely, I'd see him every game pitching against us. Shot to left, but that's going to be a foul ball. One ball, two strikes. He teamed with uh, head coach uh, Vince Vanderlip on the West Seneca Warriors, why I had uh, a couple different teams between the prospects and a couple other teams that I had run before the prospects. And I, I would see Lynch all the time. This kid can deal. This kid's a gamer. This kid knows how to win. There's a lot of positive here about him on the mound. Pitch outside. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah. 
to Lillis. Looks like the wind's died down a little bit, Tom. Not as strong. We've got a uh, steal attempt. And Ooh. safe. Ball took a bounce just before as the uh, runner arrived. So Lil is safe at second. Yeah, but Colbert makes a great play right there as he scoops that up sure. and gets the tag down to make it as close as what it was. You know, Colbert does a great job on that play. And Hodel giving his teammate a chance to try to make a play right there. You know, again, another bang, bang play over at second base. But St. Franny's trying to right now do small, do the small things, right? Do the things necessary to win a ball game as it's a tie ball game right now. 2-2 two, two the count. Foul ball to the right side. Lillis on second. Tied at four, top of six. Here at Sal Magley, Canisius and St. Francis. Tommy lits the pitcher, the wind up. Oh, hits the ball, uh, hits the runner, and he's out. Yep. <laughs> that's one of the quirkiest plays in baseball. So one out. Tony, let's look at that play right there, though, right, that you actually saw what happened there. So I've been talking about sitting on that outside corner right there, and this mm -hmm. is uh, this is Lillis who was up to bat. That was a pitch right on that outside corner, and what do you do when you reach out for that outside corner? You get them to roll their hands over, and it's a ground ball to your shortstop or third baseman. That's evident right there of why you're pitching on the outside and why it was such a great pitch there by Lynch. Runner now the batter for St. Francis, but one out, one on first. Strike and a miss, pitch and a miss. We talked about it in the St. Joe's game with Lynch, too, here. His curveball has got some major movement to it. And you can see there, it is a tough off-speed pitch to hit. Curveball hit to the left side. That's going to be good for a base hit. That advances a runner. First and second now for St. Francis with one out. Mikulski now the batter, but he'll get some instructions from the coach. I think you're going to pinch hit. No. Oh, oh, pinch oh, run. No, pinch run is what you – good call. Because they're bringing, uh, bringing Brunner. No, Brunner's on first. Yeah, Brun you, are, you are not pitching running for Brunner. That kid's yeah. got unbelievable speed out there. But let's see who he is going to pinch uh, run for here as uh, – he definitely has a very large bench and has uh, multiple opportunities here to do it. I believe that's Langdon that uh, is going to go to the dugout, which means he can't go to the field now, right, when they go back out? No, you can You can go back into the game. Like, you can substitute them and re in, you can re-entry into okay. the game if you're the starter. So if you're the starting player and you get – um, pinch hit for or pinch run for those situations, you can re-enter the game is what you can do. Okay. So it looks like Taylor is the one who's going to come into this game. Max Taylor. He'll get some instructions from the first base coach. He's over there chatting with him now. Coach Canton Zero giving him uh, instructions. And it looks like Canisius is talking right there, and we're, we're ready because it's one out. So do we see the small ball here that, you know, that we talked about, right? Do you see that bunt? Do you see that bunt to try to get runners over into scoring position to make it second and third? Well, look at the third baseman and first baseman. It looks like they're up on the grass yep. or close to it. The shortstop and the second baseman, although, are back. And, and there's a reason for that. Like, middle is going to back because a double play ends the inning. So you want them at double play depth. Swing and a miss for Mikulski. Runners first and second. Second. 
Tommy lifts the pitcher. Hits to short, bobbles it, throw to third. They got him there. But Mikulski is safe at first, so runners first and second, two outs. Hey, no matter what, get the lead runner, right? Get that lead runner and then be able to give your team the opportunity right now to, you know, try to get out of this, get out of this inning. <clears throat> Strike called on uh, Murphy. So you wonder what's going to happen on the flip side now for St. Francis. Do you see something very similar happen where Consigli goes out to the mound to possibly start the inning and then pending on see what's happened with base runners? Swing and a miss for Murphy. Two strikes. And again, that breaking ball, unbelievable job that he's doing and he's throwing today. And I'll tell you, the, the, right now the wind, the way it's blowing, should help with his break right now. Yeah, all of a sudden, the wind picked up a little bit yeah. more. Pop up. First baseman has a shot at it, and it's caught. Two nice down. Catch. Nice catch With by three Gavin D'Amico. Yep. So that'll end the top of the six as we go to the bottom of the six. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today, and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. We're back, bottom of the sixth here at Sal Magley Stadium. 4-4 Four is the score. Canisius and St. Francis. Casigli still on the mound for the Red Raiders. Looks like uh, Colbert on deck for Canisius. So, like I said, is I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Bartel is the same thought process that Coach Sanicito had where you're going to go batter by batter right now and to decide what's going to go on as far as how far Consigli goes in this game. He hasn't shown any signs of uh, letting up. And it's not like Kanish is all of a sudden starting to tag him. Right. No, and, and again, is uh, we don't have the pitch counts and different things up there. I don't know what his pitch count is. He did get up there a little bit in that first inning, if you remember, That's when, uh, when yep. they scored some runs. So you, I just don't know what the pitch count is. And, and again, you're still thinking long term here in the sense of you need him for a playoff run for you to be successful. Colbert, left-handed batter, hit to second, fielded, tossed out at first. One down. Got to love that. One pitch, one out. That's exactly a pitcher's dream right there is – uh. That helps you be able to extend any game and keep your performance going. Tommy Lynch now at the plate for Canisius. Trying to look to help himself out. As he relieves older brother Ryan in this one. Pitch up high. 0-1. I mean, one ball, one uh, no strikes. 
Tommy Lynch is hitting 429 on the season with 12 hits. Two balls, no strikes. Wind up the pitch right down the middle. Two and one. That's a pitch you're just sitting. You're looking dead red fastball right at the belt is what you're looking at. And you're you, what you are is you're going to hit your pitch, right? That's your pitch to go after. Just simply making it as difficult as possible on the Canisius batters. There's a shot to left and caught. Two outs. Consigli battling nice, right? Good inning right here. This sure. is how you extend yourself, right? Trying to make this a one, two, three inning. Go to the seventh inning and hope that your guys' bats can get going to try to win this one. But it could we could be the battle of the bullpens. Could be the difference in this game, Tony. Sure. Odell in now at uh, left-handed batter. Pitch a little high. One and zero. The count. Bottom of the sixth here at Sal Magley. We're tied at four. Did he swing? Did he break? Yeah, he did. They called. He called it a strike. One and one. One ball, two strikes now for Hodel. Looking for some heroic, late game heroics again for Canisius. Pitch inside, two and two. Hold on, we talked about it. We'll be going to end trip next year, playing for Coach Klingersmith. Hit to first. Ooh. Oh, we couldn't handle it. Hodel will get to first safely. Listen, that's Albano who took a nasty hop on yeah. Albano and uh, went off the web of his glove. Yeah, there's nothing Albano could have done with that. In fact, the fact that he was able to stay with it and almost make a great play right there is unbelievable. But that is nothing right there. That is just a... Uh, that was the freak bounce. That's yep. nothing you can do about that. Yep. That's and baseball. It, and that's where you just, uh, as a hitter, go, yeah, I get my lucky. <laughs> I get a lucky hit right there. So Hodel gets on first with two outs. Casigli, the pitch, outside. That's when a hitter goes. D'Amico, the batter. A hitter goes, wow, I, it helps the batting average no matter what. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> D'Amico hoping for a single here takes a strike one and one D'Amico's strength is no doubt is hitting and I'll tell you right now he is due I'll look for a, you know, a big possibility here. look how far he's out look at the catcher yep And Casigli went right to the outside. Two balls, one strike. He said, "You're gonna, you're, you're gonna go out as far as an umpire is gonna let you and give you, so that you can have it as an advantage for yourself." Shot up the middle. Second baseman handles it. Throws out at first, and that's gonna end. The inning. So bottom of the sixth, I'm sorry, it ends six. We head to the seventh, tied at four. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. I love being home. 
there's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home. At Cairo First Wellness, your health and well-being is our passion. Let us take care of you and your family like one of our own. Cairo First Wellness Center is dedicated to providing patients long-term relief and teaching them how to continue taking care of themselves. With a blend of different techniques, services, and personalized treatment plans, we'll help you find wellness in a way that's right for you. Between chiropractic care, spinal decompression, nutritional counseling, massage therapy, custom orthotics, and more, your relief is in our hands. If twisting, popping, and cracking intimidate you, our Pro Adjuster restores the same range of motion as a physical adjustment would with gentle, repeated tapping. Dr. Mo at Cairo First has been taking care of my back needs for the past four years. The staff treats me like family. I've had the traction, I've had the massage done, and every time, leave here feeling fresh and brand new. Cairo First Wellness Center. Your health and well-being. Our passion. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in western New York. Providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. Top of the seventh here at Sal Magley, Kenesha San St. Francis. Tied at four, Tony Caligiuri along with Tom Prince. WNY Athletics presenting Monsignor Martin Baseball. Of course, you're going to want to check out on Thursday nights, Tom Breaks it down for you. You don't want to miss it. Nowak, the batter, takes a ball on the first pitch. Hunter Nowak looking for some more heroics. Pitch swung at, missed. One and one. This is what we talked about. We knew the bullpens are going to come into play at one point, right? Kanisha's already in it, and we'll see what happens. I, I think we'll see Consigli come back out. There is somebody thrown on the side over there for Franny's. Yeah, it doesn't look like a warm-up thing, though. Brendan Reed, or is he just playing toss? Yeah, it, it's hard to tell whether they're looking to bring him in the game. You know what I mean? There could be a lot of different things. We talked about Aaron Roberts was wa uh, warming up for St. Francis um, at the the going into the last inning right there, and then Consigli stayed in the game. Um, I know Aaron very very well as I've coached him for years. Aaron is a is a ball player that can get himself ready very very quickly, so I am sure he's ready to go. That was just Albano throwing uh, loose, keeping his arm loose. Look at that curve by. Uh, Tommy Lynch, two and two is the count for Nowak, the batter. A solid game at catcher. That ball just curving, strikes him out. <laughs> Nowak's in disbelief. He's looking to the umpire. What are you talking about? Very that similar to the last pitch. It boom, was, it's broke. Because it was so similar to where the last pitch was that the ball was called, which is what was uh, you know what Nowak did not like to see or you know hear the call. Ross Witowski now the batter for St. Francis, one out.
right over the plate for a strike. Lynch really is very quickly settled into this game out, out of the bullpen right here. We had 0-2. That's going to be hit shallow. Looks like, yes, the right fielder came up on it for the out. Two outs. Tommy Lynch make, taking short work of St. Francis so far in the top of the seventh. You know, hate to say it, but it's getting the feel like we may see one of those extra inning ball games, especially with the way we've seen pitching settle in since that first inning. All right. Consigli now the batter. Strike. That curveball is really working for uh, Tommy Lynch. Swung at. That's going to be a foul ball. 0-2. A lot of room in foul territory here at Sal Magley Stadium, so... It's something you never want to make sure you give up on. You go after these foul balls because you can absolutely give your team to steal some outs instead of thinking that it's going to go out of play. At most fields, it'd be out of play. You're not even worried about it. Here at Sal Magley, it can be an out. Shot to uh, left. And caught. Podless was uh, settled right under there, and that ends the uh, top of the seventh. We go to the bottom of seven, tied at four. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor Martin Baseball. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Back here at Sal Magley Stadium, bottom of the seventh, we are tied at four. St. Francis and Canisius at Sal Magley Stadium, which for this year, it's uh, Canisius' home field. They travel to West Seneca for football and travel to Niagara Falls for baseball. Great game so far. These two teams that are... Well coached, well played. Kids are leaving it all out on the uh, diamond today. Both, uh, all three pitchers that we've seen so far today have been outstanding. We've seen great uh, play by the catchers. Bulk of the hitting was in the first two innings, and we haven't seen much since. Pitch outside. 1-0. And, oh. and it looked like that was Reed who we saw warming up who can pitch. So we've seen Roberts and Reed both kind of warm up. Roberts was back on the mounds. Uh, Reed we just saw kind of do a, you know, a toss. Christian Cabrera, the uh, batter for Canisius. Pitch. 
pitch right over the plate by Castilla. That's a strike. Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the hero today? Yep, I'll tell you, this, this first runner is huge. First batter is big right here. You get your lead runner on, it opens up a lot of opportunities for Coach Sanicito. Pitch is hit. First baseman's going after it in foul territory. And couldn't get it. Foul ball. Not only is this a deep field that we talked about, he's battling the wind over there, too, that you can see the flag is straight up right there, sideways, blowing towards his way. Very tough catch to be able to make for Albano over sure. there. Sure. We really haven't seen uh, too many deep hits today. Both pitchers have been forcing a lot of stuff on the ground and uh, short short uh, field. Another one fouled off to the right side. Just don't hit my car. <laughs> no, that's nowhere near cars. Cabrera fighting his way through. Casigli just throwing nice stuff. Another foul. I tell you though, the, the the wind has got that different feel to it right now. You know what I mean? Like it feels like, you know, you see the weather changing a little bit. You really do. Well, it's picking up more. I mean, you can hear it going across our microphones, as opposed to earlier. That's when you know it's uh, it's it's increased. It's been steady the whole game, but at times you're getting those gusts. Sigley with the pitch hit to third, throw to first, and they got him. Cabrera out at first. One out. And that'll bring Podlas to the plate for the Crusaders. And like I said all along, I'm going to expect to see Podlas try to lay one down for a bunt early in the count. He likes to go towards that first base side is what he likes to do. Nowak started to set up on that uh, on that um, outside corner and then brought it back inside. Well, it was a curveball too, so now you'll see him go right back to the outside corner. Here's contact. And right fielder settles under it for an out. Two outs. Nobody on. Tied at four. Bottom of the seventh. One run does it for Canisius. And that'll bring Victor Mazzara to the plate. And Sigley's gone the distance, still pitching well. Ball must looked like a strike to me. Yeah, it must have called it a little high. Wind up, pitch, another ball. Mm, that was another high one right there. It's not high by much, at least from. Yeah, that one was a little high. Was it? Okay. Yeah. It looked like it was uh, shoulder level. Couldn't get the outside corner on that one. Three balls, no strikes for Mazzara. Two outs. Now Nowak and uh, Casilia will have Casigli will have a little powwow at the mound. It'll be it'll be interesting after this inning. So it looks like you know we're an out here from going to extra innings. Pitch, 
inside, and Mazzara draws a walk. So Mazzara gets on base for the second time today. So, you, you know, you would think, I mean, oh, it, this is, oh, they're going to read. Again, this could be his pitch count was getting close oh, enough. Wait, no, 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 wait no? a second. No, they're going to Albano is what they're going to do. Reed's going to go into play first base. And Albano's the one I saw throwing over on the yep. right side. Yep. So, yep, Albano's going to come into pitch right now. Reed's going to come into play first base. And then Consigli will come out of the game right here. Now, how does this change the dynamics of St. Francis? Um, I mean, does it add a little bit more bat or no? no or I, it, it depends what they did with the lineup, right? Because my guess is Consigli's going to probably – I wonder if he's staying in this game as far as his, his bat goes. So does Reed well, actually – he's headed out to the outfield, it okay. looks like. So then, so then so he's going to come in for somebody else. Reed's coming in for somebody else. I'm trying to get the number of who's coming off out of uh, out of the outfield. Thirteen is that who it is? Colin Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Murphy will come out. So ultimately, Reed goes in for Murphy. Okay. That's the you know right. the easy way to do it. But Albano's going to come into pitch right now, so he'll come from first base to the mound. Reed will come in right now to play first base, and then Consigli's going to go out and play right field is what he's going to do. It looks like Albano has more explosive delivery. I don't know if it's because it's a shorter frame uh, or if he just throws harder. But it looks like he explodes into his pitches. And uh, uh, Laduca, Jacob Laduca, will be the Canisius batter with two outs. Man on first, Mazzara. I don't know what kind of speed Mazzara has. If uh, What leadoff batter do you know doesn't have speed? True. Though? <laughs> right? I don't know. I never let off. Right? So, uh, and then, you know, Luduka also showed he's got some speed here, too. That's why you got to look at anything into a gap could end this game. Steal attempt. Throw was off. Mazzara safe at second. With two outs. Noak's throw was a little bit to the outside. So here you go. This is now. LaDuca can be the hero right here. A single will do this. A single wins it for Canisius. And LaDuca more than capable at the plate. Albano with the wind up. The throw. Ball. mazzaro has got a good lead off on second. And I'll tell you, you do not want Morrow coming to the plate to try to win this game. Oh, this, this could be it. Hits to the single. This could Takes be it. Takes a dive. Throw's going to be coming into the plate. Mazzara scores. Canisius wins. Wow. Two games in a row. Canisius does it in extra innings. Now does it in fashion on a walk-off hit. Canisius does it again and keeps their shot alive at a Monsignor Martin title right here. But, boy, I'm telling you, like I said it earlier in this broadcast, I love how scrappy they are. I love how this team doesn't give up. I love how this team is never say die. They are proving it time and time again. Canisius comes up big with a win. Oh, outstanding uh, performance. Both teams played very well today, Tom. And, uh, you know, again, as you said, these two quality teams on Monsignor Martin – and Kanisha's just rolling right now. Yep. This now guarantees that the first and second spots are now taken between St. Joe's and and uh, Kanisha's. But still needs to be figured out with games to be played because St. Francis still has got two with St. Joe's, right? 
So some big things still up to play to see who can win this. But I'll tell you, it's still up for grabs between St. Joe's and Canisius as those two, think about it, have split. A 9-8 win for Canisius and a 2-1 victory for St. Joe's over Canisius. Yeah, <laughs> it just seems like they have great games every time they play. Uh, but uh, once again, great uh Great job by uh, by both teams out there. Uh, five to four is our final here at Sal Magley Stadium. Big thanks to uh, Jake Hartford on camera. Uh, for Tom Prince, I'm Tony Caligiuri. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for listening. WNY Athletics presents Monsignor.